Hello, Slatters. Dennis has got motor trouble. Again. We're back to our leaf spring roots here. And uh, this is the motor out of Dennis's TX340. We've already pulled it. Insert clip here of pulling it. <laughs> so look at this. Dennis has been at work for five whole minutes. He's got the motor mounts loose. He's got the exhaust off. Um, we're gonna cut the recoil cord. I think everything's unplugged. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and we gotta we gotta tie the hood up with the old recoil rope. We'll just grab a recoil rope and tie it to the handlebars, and then then the motor will be out. Man, there's nothing. Nothing as good as working on a free air sled. So easy. This best thing to work on they're ever invented. Hi there. Uh, just interrupt my video for a couple seconds to ask you to please hit the subscribe button and help me grow the channel. It'd really be appreciated. Thanks, and we'll see you on the trails. So we've already pulled the motor. I should say Dennis already pulled the motor. It took like five minutes to get it out. I, these old free air leaf spring sleds are like the dream of all sleds to work on. I don't think there's anything easier than these. So, motor came right out, and the reason it's coming out, well, you want to demonstrate? She's a bit locked up. So, I was doing some carb tuning on it, and it was sitting there at idle, and all of a sudden it went rattle, 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 clunk, and then it would only turn backwards and not forwards. So, our uh, suspicion is that um, the crank bearing, most likely at the PTO end, has... Sounds familiar. Yeah, done exactly what the, <laughs> what the XLT did. So... We're going to go through rebuild this motor, except for he's probably going to get the older style bottom end because that's what I have on hand. So we'll use what parts we can because we know this is a really good motor, but uh, we'll probably be switching to the old style crank in cases and we'll show you the difference when we get there. Yep, we found out what locked up the motor and it wasn't the bottom end. Doesn't that suck? All right, well, we can see what happened. That's not good. Um, the cylinder is looking pretty rough now. Showing the pieces. And we had to abuse it to get it out, although it may still be salvageable. Yeah, the sealing surface. Yeah, that it's still going to seal. We, we'll have to file that down, but... I th we think it was this corrosion on those two studs that had it locked in so bad. Look at the other one. Dennis just lifts it off by hand. Look at that. And the other piston is not shattered. <laughs> not shattered. <laughs> so I had this happen on my TXL once. Well, not very long ago. Luckily, a TXL you can just rebore and go oversize. So. Guess we'll uh, flip it over. Well, we'll get the flywheel pulled and then we'll flip it over and get the crankcase apart and see what's really going on. I just wanted to show you my homemade flywheel puller. Um, it's literally just two four bolt patterns. And the reason I have it is because the SLP puller doesn't really have a four bolt pattern. It fits the two different Polaris four, four bolt patterns, and that's just a five ace bolt. Thing works like a champ. I've been using it for years. one yep like i said it's it's oh, almost yeah. more of a job for a for a locksmith <laughs> or, a dentist. It, or a dentist than it is for a mechanic first look at dennis's crank that stuff's a little scarred up i don't know nothing obvious yet here you want to film for a second and... oh what the hell is that She's cracked? No, no, it's a piece of sealant. Yeah. Well, there's that bearing that I remember. That's not that bad. There's Ooh. the baddie. Yeah. That was the one we didn't like. <laughs> and that one. Oh, she's a little rough. Oh. So, we'll see if we can dig up a better crank on this.
Well, here we are in round two. This is an old motor I bought at a swap meet. Pulled it out of my stash. It is what it is, but you'll notice it does have the cylinder and piston Dennis needs, assuming they're good when we get it apart. Tear this apart. Yep, we're just going to tear her down just like the last one. Um, this is an old style crank case and crank. So when we get there, I'll show you the differences. All right, so I want to give you a little uh, TX tech info here. There's two different CDI boxes on these, depending on the year. The earlier ones had what we call the small box. The later ones have the big box. One's physically smaller, one's physically larger. And uh, the way to distinguish the flywheel is the flywheel for the big box has a small bolt pattern. I know it seems backwards. And then this is a small box, small box flywheel. You can see that I have the bolts in the, in the outer hole formation. Now, as far as the stator goes, the stator is also matched to the flywheel in the box. And uh, looking at them, looking at the plugs, looking at the wires, you can't tell. You can plug one into the other. Everything looks the same. So what you actually have to do to tell what stator is get out your ohm meter and ohm out the, the different wires to figure it out. So uh, we're just going to keep them separate so that we know what goes with what here. So I pickled the bottom end with oil. We're going to let that sit a bit. We're going to take a five minute here and drain. So here's the differences in how to identify early and late style TX340 cranks. 250 cranks will be the same for a given year. So the main thing, if you go to the crank itself, the labyrinth seal has the grooves in the early style and the cases are smooth. On the later style, the labyrinth seal is, area is smooth on the crank, and the grooves, as you can see, are in the cases. That's the main difference. That's what keeps you from using a later crank in an early case and, and vice versa. So the next thing, like I mentioned, is the seals. So the later use these more normal seals, um, 62 millimeter, 30 inside with a, with a, a groove, and the groove fits into the case there. And that's at both ends. And these are common to like Indy 500, Indy 650, uh, 48 Trail. A, a lot of later sleds use these seals. Um, the earlier style uses, uh, this is the PTO seal and it's pressed into this seal holder. And then I showed you earlier how that's bolted on. This is the mag seal. You can see it's retained with the four screws. And like I mentioned, I don't pressure check to more than 7 PSI with the early style, but I'll go to 14 with the later. So that's the main differences. When you look at the uh, end pattern for the recoil housing, it's the same. Uh, the crank stick out is the same. I mean, we'll still, because we're changing things up, we'll still verify clutch alignment, but they both use the deep bore clutch. Um, both of them have these corks that you can see here. In the holes in the in the uh, crank, they were for crank stuffing. They weren't necessarily for balance or anything. And um, I don't know. They tend to fall out. This one's long gone. Probably just got ate by the motor when Dennis was going down the ditch. I don't know. I I take them out because frankly, I could see the the skirts are thin enough. I could see where that alone could break a piston skirt if it got loose and got chewed through the motor. So Dennis has pulled all the corks out of this one and. Um, you know, I've done it before. In fact, I've grass dragged these 340TX motors extensively. Been through several motors. Never noticed a difference in performance with cork or no cork. So if you feel different and you want to run corks, knock yourself out. It's fine with me. I'm not telling you you can't. But uh, anyways, so there's the differences. Oh yeah, and then to come back to this, this is an early bottom case half. It is shiny there, but... Um, you know, there's no actual grooves. You can see there's actual grooves in the later case half. So there you go. That's your differences. Uh, Dennis is getting the earlier one because we spun the bearings and uh, they just seem super mint. So uh, we're building them the nicest motor we can build them. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, bolt the case halves together and build up a motor. So we're putting new rings on Dennis's cylinder here. And uh, the chrome is pretty good. It's not worn through or anything. Uh, so we're just going to break the glaze. I bought this uh, ball hone years ago. It was whatever it is, it's the correct one for these. I've used it on several of these uh, 
three R340 TXs and uh, with chrome, specific for the chrome, works great. So I give you a little shot of the chrome cylinders after they've been ball honed. Um, don't have any crazy expectations of super deep marks. I mean, this is chrome. It's really thin. You get the right stone and uh, it just marks it up a little, kind of just breaks the glaze and makes it have that soft look. That's it. All right, bringing you back. We've been building the motor. Pressure check time. Only 7 PSI, like I mentioned earlier, because this has got the old spool seals on it. Especially that uh, seal on the mag side. Well, you don't even have to squirt yet. Let's, let's, let's save the squirt bottle till we know we have a leak. Assume the best? Yeah, assume the best. You know what? It helps to open the ball valve before you dial up the pressure. There's some pressure going. I could feel it building. I'm like, oh shit, I probably turned it up to 60. I don't want to open the ball valve now. It's five. It's leaking. Where's the leak? And you can hear it. Can you? Shit, yeah. Probably this one. I didn't get this one. It was super tight. No? Old school? No. Oh, that's over there. It's the old school crank seal leaking on us. If anything's going to leak on one of these, that's it. Here we go again. Pressure regulator still set to seven. Mm -hmm. Didn't mess with it. Whoa. All right, third try on the pressure check. Fourth try. Open. All right, so. I believe I mentioned earlier the old seals might fight you when you're pressure checking. You can only go to 7 PSI, at least that's what I do. They're fighting us. They're fighting us. So uh, at this point, we've got three bond around both seals because it's not the seals leaking. It's around the metal case of the seal, and uh, it's not holding 7 PSI. So we're going to let it set up overnight, and uh, tomorrow we'll pressure check it again and hope for better luck. I don't know. What else are you going to do? All right, it's the next day. Um, test Pressure test number five? Five-ish. I think five. We'll know. We'll have to review the video later. But Turn it up to six PSI. We let, The reason it's the next day is we did three bond on the seals. Um, it's really we just wanted to let the three bond dry, kind of set up a little. Tell me I don't hear it hissing already. No, don't do, 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 do that yet. Let's let her sit for a minute. Let's 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 at least test it. First. Get it up to six. All right. Hold it six. We're at six. We're at six and a half, and the clock is ticking. What are you doing? The clock's ticking. I guess I do one of these. It's looking pretty good. Of course, we're only seven seconds in. That's optimistic, <laughs> isn't it? 49, 50. The needle has, <laughs> hasn't moved. Hasn't moved. And bang. Boom. Perfect pressure test. Just took us five tries. <laughs> All right, Yanker, first pull. Let's do a squirt bottle. Yeah, we're here. Let's give it a little. Okay. All right. the test ride on Dennis's sled. We actually did one in the dark, but it was no good for uh, taking video. So uh, 
He's going to give us uh, how many poles. How warm is it right now? 15 degrees Fahrenheit? 15-ish, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll do a little cold start action here. Sled's been outside. Okay. She's been outside for about three hours, so she's, you know, ambient temperature. Kill switch on? Yep. All right. You anchor away. Ooh. That's a wrap on uh, rebuilding Dennis's TX340. Um, thing's an animal. I can't believe it's a 340. That thing really moves out good. As the video shows, uh, it does lift the skis off the ground a bit, so I'll have to work on my cornering skills. I thought it still cornered pretty good as yeah. long as the skis are down. The skis are down. <laughs> I think it's set up pretty optimally oh, for uh, for ditch banging right now. You know, it That's turns why you sharp, want the skis up. but you can get good li good lift when you get to a driveway. You get really good ski lift right yeah. away. She's so, peppy again. Oh, she's peppy. Yeah. Well, brand new rings and freshly honed cylinder and everything is just about perfect on that motor. Yeah. Thanks, John, for everything on this. No problem. That was a fun, fun rebuild. Yeah. Unexpected fun rebuild. I love these old free airs, so happy to help you keep this one. And we'll be ditch banging it pretty quick, I think. I think so. Yeah. All right, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far, you know you like the channel enough to subscribe. Hit the notification. Hit the notification. It's free. Subscriptions are free today. <laughs> Go for it. They're always free. Uh, and we really appreciate you watching. See you on the trails.